The talk today is <coughs> by Steve Parker, and uh, Steve Parker is the founder of the uh, creative agency uh, CHI and Partner. So before CHI and Partner, he uh, worked in developing social media strategy for some of the leading brands, uh, including Dell, Argos, John Lewis, uh, Jack Wills, and News International. We believe he has a lot of experience to share with you, and I will allow him to come and do his presentation. And the title of his presentation, again, is Real-Time Marketing, a Guide for Brands. Thank you. <coughs> Morning, everyone. Thanks, Joel. Um, just to clarify, I'm founder of The Social Practice, which is part of a group that also includes CHI and Partners, which is a well-known ad agency. I'd, I'd like to be able to claim that, but, you know, that's stretching it a bit. Um, yeah, the topic today is, is real-time marketing, and there's been quite a lot of uh, hype and buzz around this topic, particularly driven by some quite high-profile cases uh, during the Super Bowl and, and kind of Royal Baby, where brands put really big budgets behind this activity. I want to sort of get beyond that and really talk about um, you know, how every organization of every size can actually move quicker and reap some of the rewards about engaging with consumers. The first thing to say is um, real-time marketing is not a new kind of concept. Um, a good kind of example, if, if you think back to the last time you were out for a friend's birthday in a restaurant, um, and the waiters maybe get tipped off and they, they come at the end of the meal uh, with a kind of free you know, dessert or cake. Um, and, and that is a great example of real-time marketing. They've, they've uh, actually added to your experience in a really relevant and opportunistic way and obviously get the benefits of the publicity and the kind of word of mouth. Another example um, that is, is happening kind of currently and steering all the headlines is what Virgin uh, Holidays did when same-sex uh, marriage was legalized early this year and they're very quick to get out with a really nice uh, kind of addition to that conversation that was kind of really really on brand. So the things those two examples uh, have in common is it's marketing that, that moves at the pace of consumer conversations and that's kind of I think a useful description and explanation of, of what we mean by real-time marketing. But the really big difference um, that's happened just over the last few years is the advent of social media. It's really brought down the barriers between consumers and brands and allowed people to engage directly in, in conversations as they are trending and as they are building. So now brands can actually participate this on a scale and frequency that they were never able to uh, pre-social pre media. But really, you know, sh should you care? I mean, it sounds like quite a lot of effort. Um, and if you, if you work in an organization that is quite complex or risk averse, you know, is it really worth trying to get beyond the obvious barriers and get everyone kind of moving quickly? Um, I mean, I, I would argue yes, um, particularly um, because of consu consumer expectations and how they're changing. Um, that sort of long-term planning cycles are kind of going out the window. Uh, consumers' um, expectations of how they interact with brands has totally changed. So they want to be able to talk to brands and get response on their channel of choice, whether that's phone, face-to-face, -face, you know, Facebook, Twitter you know, kind of YouTube and, and kind of Google Plus. Well, probably not Google Plus yet, but you know, all, all the kind of other ones. Um, there's also consumer needs, I think. Um, you know, consumers want to feel closer to brands that understand the cultural cues and actually listen to them and delivering and giving them what they want when they kind of want them. Um, and then finally, relevancy, I mean, in this sort of age of information overload and really fast-paced communications, staying relevant is, 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 couldn't be more important. And relevancy is a moving target, so you really have to stay up to, to stay relevant. 
but the rewards for brands that are able to do this are, are really big and you, that's how you build brand love and affinity and get that recommend, recommendations that every marketer is, is looking for. There's also uh, an interesting piece of research by eMarketer. Um, this is US data, but I think there's some good parallels uh, for UK and other countries. Is there are benefits to real-time marketing right the way through the kind of consumer journey from awareness um, right the way through to kind of purchase. So we're starting to see data that does back that up. So now I'm going to talk to you a bit about kind of five ways you can get started and actually work out where the opportunities are uh, for your organization. Um, and the first thing to say is have a look at your internal processes and your kind of imp approvals because if you don't get this right up front, you're never going to crack it in the heat of the moment. And this is something that I've learned uh, the, the hard way and want to kind of share with you. So imagine one day you have this brilliant idea you're listening to what's happening on social and conversations and you have this great idea to participate in a really relevant way so you go and speak to your team and you tell them the idea and they love the idea too and go yes let's really try and make this happen let's go and speak to the boss so so you go and speak to the boss and the boss is kind of a bit lukewarm about it and wants a kind of second opinion so they go and speak to their boss and they have a big kind of conflab. Their boss says, we really need to get PR involved, we need to speak to communications. I'm not doing anything till I've sort of covered my arse and got a second opinion. The PR guy's a little bit risk averse, um, you know, worried about what if it backfires. So goes, right, we've got to go and speak to legal. So you go and speak to legal, you tell them about the idea. Legal asks, what is social media? So you kind of have to go back three steps and start to explain it to them. When they really realize what you mean, then they need a bit of a lie down and need to sort of recover their composure. And by that time, the idea is dead. And a little part of you is as well, because you really wanted to make it happen. So first thing, really make sure you think through that, that process up front. There are some other rules of the road um, that are really important start by actually identifying a list uh, of the topics and conversations that you would consider that are brand appropriate and you would get involved given the opportunity. I would also create a list of um, topics that you wouldn't go near that would be totally out of rate, range or you wouldn't have credibility and really try and, try and stick to those. Also have a think about your tone of voice so you know Brands often fall into trying to be too chummy or too over familiar and it really jars with people. Um, so really have a think of the language you're going to use uh, and the kind of tone of voice. And a good example of a brand um, that figured all this out and really fronted up in the face of adversity is, is O2. Uh, I don't know if you remember when they had a power in outage and the signal went down and they were getting so much uh, hassle and really quite explicit uh, kind of uh, tweets and their team kept their head and actually started replying to these uh, in, in quite a kind of humorous way that actually made people realize how kind of offensive um, some of the some of the flack they were taking and they actually turned around that sentiment and came out of it uh, looking pretty good at what could have been a really uh, damaging um, um, kind of situation to be in the other point is you know, if you think about the opportunities a brand or organisation gets to participate in the moment, you will get some that are just totally spontaneous, but more of them will be events and topics you can actually plan for. Um, and with real-time marketing, I would say you need to plan more, um, not less. And a great example um, is during the Oscars. You know, they happen every year. You know they're going to happen. You know they're going to be trending. They know there's a massive conversation around it. And I love what Pantene did, uh, where they actually had an artist at the Oscars ceremony sketching the hairstyles um, of uh, those on the red carpet and the actors and celebs, and then just tweeting them out in kind of near real time. And it was really brand relevant. It really added to the conversation. And as a result, got shared and, and, and was a really kind of great activity. Taking the, exactly the same event, another Oscars uh, activity, 
Stella basically um, just photoshopped an image of, of a beer dropping in the names of those that won the Oscars. Now, in my view, they're not adding to the conversation at all. They're just repeating what people already know. So it wasn't a sort of disaster, but it didn't really add that much to the conversation. And as a result, didn't really get shared that much. The other kind of um, recommendation is about listening. So. Um, if, if you're not listening to conversations, then you're not going to be aware of the opportunities and you're not going to be in a position of participating and increasing awareness. Um, now, this next one uh, is, is I really like, but I don't know if anyone saw the programme on dogging on, on Channel 4. I'm trying to get dogging trending at the digital marketing show, so if you're on Twitter, maybe help me to do that. Um, so it was a sort of um, documentary and, and, every, and it was first person accounts of dogging and they all w wore these slightly peculiar masks and it was quite bizarre but like highly entertaining. Um, and um, Terry, the, the fine looking chap on, on the right there, halfway through the program said, before he goes out dogging, he always puts on his links. Um, and, and Twitter just went uh, mad going, this is a massive issue for links. What are they going to do? This is really going to affect their brand. Um, and then within minutes, um, the links team on Twitter tweeted out, you know, whatever the occasion, you know, attracts attention and just totally defuse that situation. Um, I mean, the conversations carried on and they were going, you know, they'll be having crisis meetings the next day. So they followed it up. I don't know how they got these masks so quickly um, and just posted a picture saying, you know, crisis meeting, we decide there is no crisis. And they actually came out of that situation really well. And they wouldn't have been able to do that if they hadn't planned and been comfortable with their tone and made those decisions in the heat of the moment when everyone else is potentially losing their heads. Um, I can't really talk about real-time marketing without mentioning the, the kind of Super Bowl and, and the power outage. Um, I mean, the best known example is Oreos, you know, uh, dunking in the dark when they tweeted a picture of that. But, you know, they're massively high profile. I actually had a look at what other brands did around this moment. I really like what one, the um, charity did, where they actually tweeted... Um, you know about uh, that a lot of people in Africa never have any power so just for a moment think about them and there was you know uh, you know hundreds of tweets and uh, awareness and it didn't cost them anything they were just listening to conversations so you know respect to to the team that that pulled that one off so if you put all these things together I'm really uh, keen on actually building a process so you can repeat it and do this regularly because if it's just once a blue moon you'd question how much, much is it actually doing for the brand. Um, so we work on a sort of creative newsroom for our clients that kind of starts on the content strategy and defining the areas you would talk about, your tone of voice and then right the way through the stages I've talked about to how you kind of measure the impact in terms of sentiment or shares or reach. And then you try and repeat that. And the more you do it, the more opportunities that you'll find and, and the better you'll execute them. As well as listening in to uh, conversations that are happening, you can actually create your own moment. And this is something we've done with uh, one of our clients, Argos, who, who are a great brand to, to, to work with. Um, we actually work with CHI, the ad agency that we talked about, and they've created the little blue alien family. I don't know if you've, if you've seen them on TV. Well, we've been experimenting about how you would add a social layer to TV uh, to make the most of that two-screen behaviour. And the latest campaign, um, the, the Argos aliens don't quite get life on Earth and they get a few things wrong, so rather than getting gifts from Santa, they wanted to choose a gift for Santa. Uh, and that was the premise of the campaign. So we asked uh, TV viewers and Twitter users to come up and tweet in uh, suggestions they could buy for Santa. Um, and we, we spent months planning this because we wanted to respond to these uh, suggestions in real time uh, using video responses. So we picked products we like to get from Satnav to presents uh, for Rudolph um, but also we, we pick the most popular names that we might get people tweeting in. 
So then when we got these tweets, we were able to respond in seemingly real time with some really quite surprising answers. Um, so I hope you'll be able to hear this. So when someone called Kirsty tweeted in suggestion, we'd already pre-filmed uh, a clip with Bill Nye. He does the voiceover. And this is what she got back on Twitter within seconds. Can you hear that? It's worth hearing, we'll see if the... I'll do it again. All right. He basically goes, <laughs> that was an amazing suggestion, Kirsty, I love it, and, and in his sort of Bill Nye kind of character, um, and, and Kirsty is kind of so blown away by getting this response within seconds, uh, it just creates this massive ripple effect and that's what she shares and, and sort of passes on. So we did this, we had about six community managers working all the way through weekends, all the way through evenings, the duration of the campaign uh, and really got some impressive results. Um, we trended on Twitter for four days and that's the first time Argos have, have trended so they were really happy. We had over 80,000 mentions of the GIF for Santa hashtag and over 100 million impressions um, and drove traffic to the digital gift guide, which was a big uh, goal for the campaign. But there's also um, some quite um, cringeworthy examples of brands that probably don't go through the planning process, dive in there and it kind of backfires. Um, the first example is Epicurious. The, um, food website who you know really inappropriately tried to piggyback on the awful news of, of the Boston bombings with some Boston themed recipe ideas and obviously the backlash was fierce and, and quite rightly so on Twitter. Um, MSN couldn't help themselves trying to drive up engagement on Facebook um, by asking people to click like to pay their respects to Robin Gitt from the Bee Gees. Um, and then finally, in um, London Luton Airport, um, you know, tweeted a picture of a mishap at another airport. Um, and you know, these brands really hadn't thought thought these through. Um, I don't know who was running their social, but a massive uh, kind of fail uh, and really inappropriate behaviour. But I don't want to, that to sort of put you off uh, trying to engage and use real time marketing because I think if you do. Um, go through the right processes, think it through, there are some ma massive benefits to have uh, for organisations of all sizes and the point I would make, it's not a one-off opportunistic opportunity, it's thinking about how you tell these stories that fit with your ongoing communications so it's really consistent, uh, you know, much like the kind of writing, uh, you know, within a stick of rock. Okay, thank you. I think we've got time for a few questions, if anyone has any. Okay. I'll also be around uh, afterwards if anyone wants to chat then. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.